Did you know that in Jewish scripture, God is described as a bearded rabbi and that he has a big penis? Did you know in those texts, you will also find references to God having sons and a wife? Jewish scripture also allows demon worship, prescribes certain magical spells, and promotes astrology. Also, according to Jewish texts, Jews are a divine race, but God cursed black people. Also, according to traditional Jewish law, if a Jewish man sexually assaults a Gentile woman as young as three, she should be put to death. All of this and much more is found in Judaism. Jews and Muslims also agree that the big problem with the Jewish people is that throughout history, they continuously depart from this revelation by falling into idolatry and corrupting their religion. This is the main theme of the Bible, actually. God tells the Israelites to worship him alone and not be tempted into adopting the religion of others. But the Israelites can't help themselves. Whether they end up bowing down to a golden calf or to the goddess Ashtoreth, the Jewish people betray their covenant with God and God punishes them. This is what the Bible says over and over again. And Muslims are 100% agreed on this because this is what the Quran affirms. In verse 930, referring to the Jews and people of the book, they were condemned for breaking their covenant, rejecting Allah's signs, killing the prophets unjustly, and for saying, our hearts are unreceptive. Of course, all of these things I've mentioned are categorically rejected in Islam. In fact, Islamic scripture explicitly denounces all these things, and that's because Islam has preserved its strict monotheism and successfully warded off the polytheistic influences of other religions and cultures. The same, unfortunately, cannot be said for Judaism, and this is why Judaism shares many of the polytheistic elements found in other Near Eastern religions. Okay, well, first I'll mention that uh, I don't think Daniel misrepresented any scripture about Judaism originally being polytheistic. Um, most Israeli scholars, secular archaeologists, agree with Daniel on that issue. Most Jews reject the actual fundamental truth claims and would actually agree with Daniel about the polytheistic origins or what ancient Israel was actually like. From that perspective, you say, well, if there's something nefarious of Judaism, yeah, there's very troublesome statements, uh, slavery, racism, in group preference. I'm confused, you know, if you concede that there are these distortions, there are these kinds of changes that have been made um, throughout uh, Jewish history, you've, you've kind of conceded that there is polytheism uh, that Jews have fallen into. My claim is not just that they've fallen into it, but it's actually been enshrined or it's actually been preserved, that kind of polytheism within the biblical, uh, within the Bible itself, and then the Talmud and then other Midrash, etc. Now, why not accept Islam when you see it as, you know, having this kind of positive role? It seems like the obvious choice, especially someone who aspires to be monotheistic. Yeah, I appreciate your... Uh critique and criticism, you know, from a higher level, uh, your criticism should make us a better, a better people. And just, you know, quickly say why I'm not Muslim, why I don't plan on converting to Islam is because I see that um, Islam necessitates the truth of Judaism. It's just, it uh, uh, necessitates the Hebrew prophets, although they might say that it's been corrupted. Uh, from a Judeo perspective, it's okay, maybe we've fallen out the path. And, you know, you as a, you know, a, so to say, Ishmaelite, could uh, you know, a follower of Abraham could help us get back on the path as where I believe Judaism could be true independent of Islam, even if Muhammad is coming to revive and correct the message of the old uh, of the Hebrew prophets. Is well, thank you for setting me back on the proper path, but uh, I don't see a necessity to accept Islam or follow Muhammad. Um, and you know, if Daniel was correct in these things, well, thank you for uh, you putting me on the right path. But I'm still going to continue to follow the Hebrew prophets. And even if you raise the standard to say he's not my prophet, he's your prophet. And uh, if the if there is corrections that, that say theoretically that there was corruption in the Hebrew uh, tradition and Muhammad is accurately as a descendant of Ishmael or through some sort of uh, connection to God called prophecy to correct the message of the Hebrew prophets, I still don't see any reason why I should become Muslim. I should just... Uh, of become a better Jew.